Hi there, today we're going to talk about working in InDesign and specifically when we bring in graphics into InDesign and even more specific when we bring in a Photoshop layered document. Currently I have up here a sample newsletter template and I've just put a graphic on the front page that I want to use here. This is a Photoshop file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the grabber, content grabber circle here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down to edit original. Actually, I'm going to come down to edit with specifically and say Adobe Photoshop 2020. So back here in Photoshop, this is the graphic and I download this graphic off a paid website that I subscribe to. Let's take a look at some parts of this. Over on the right hand side, here's the layers panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this visibility eye right here on presentation layer and I'm going to hide it. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and I'm going to drag across all the visibility eyeballs, I'll call them. And that's going to hide everything in this layer document. So we can see what parts are on individual group layers. So here's a layer group called background. And it looks like it has some clouds and a blue background. Looks like it has like a gradient light burst over here. Here's the what they call element two is kind of a billboardish background. Uh, here we have effect. And what this is, this is where the text is that has the effect applied to it so it looks three dimensional. Up here is a layer called your text here. This is a smart object layer where in a few minutes we can double click on this layer, type in our own text, and then this effect will automatically be applied. Up here we have another layer. This one's just called Element. It looks like it's some paper airplanes with some trails. And up here they have a layer group called Presentation, which is the text that we could replace, remove, or whatever we want to do. So all of this has been placed in InDesign. So let me go back to InDesign just for a second and show you something that you may know about, may not. I'm just going to come over here to InDesign. And I'm on my graphic here and I have it selected. I'm going to go under the Object menu and I'm going to come down to Object Layer Options. Because it is a PSD file and it has layers, we can see, if I pull this over here, you can see here's all the same layers that were in the Photoshop file because it's remembering this because it is a PSD file. Now the beautiful thing is let's say I bring this over into InDesign and I don't want to use their presentation text. So I can hide that right here while I'm in photo uh, while I'm in InDesign and I don't have to use that element or that group of layered elements here. So just as a reminder I can turn on and turn off layers as I want to use them right here in InDesign because it's a layered Photoshop document. So maybe I don't want to use the background. I can click on that eyeball here and just remove it. I'm going to turn it back on so I can see it. Now, the nice thing is, these are layer groups from Photoshop. I can click on the little twiddle arrow here and see what elements make up that layer group. Here's a series of clouds, uh, something called light, something called the background color. So let's say if I come up here and I'll press and drag through these, just so you get an idea of what's going on. So now those are all going to be turned off here in a second, and I'm going to turn this on. So maybe the only thing I want is I want just within the background here, the background color. Um, maybe I want the light. Let's see what that's doing. Oh, it brought in a blue layer with kind of a light gradient in the upper left. And these must be the individual cloud formations that they built for me here. So because this is a layered Photoshop file, and there's layer groups here, I'm able to turn on and off the entire groups, aka background, or individual layers within that layer group. Now, what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to come back over here, I'm going to scroll up here a little bit, 
and I'll click back on presentation here. And that's just going to be bring everything back the way it was. Next, I'm going to click OK. Let's go back into Photoshop for a second and take a look at some other options here. In Photoshop, there's a capability called Comps. I'm going to go to the Window menu and I'm going to bring up the panel called Layer Comps. And what Layer Comps do is they keep track of what layers I have on and off and the parts of those layers. So let's say I go up here and I want to save a comp look of this for a client. And I'm going to say I want to make it here. I want to have, I don't want to have the arrows. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the eyeball by element two. Whoops, that was the background. How about, uh, let's go up here and click on element up here. So that turns off those arrows. They're not visible. In fact, uh, I don't want the presentation text. That's all I want. So what I can do here, I can come over to the layer comps. I can come down here in the lower right corner. There's a little plus sign. And when I click on this, this is going to create a new layer comp based upon the layers that I've turned on and off. So I'm going to make a new one here and I'll name this um, minus airplanes. Okay. Now in this layer comp panel, I have other comps I made ahead of time. If I click in this little square to the left of the name complete, that was the name of my comp, complete is going to turn on all the layers. Watch over here. See? Or I have a layer comp called minus presentation text. So we have the ability to turn and turn off and turn on layers and layer parts. Save them as a comp. So let's say I come over here and I'm going to hide all the layers except for let's say background and um, I think I like that I think I want to comp just with this background so with just the layer group called the background picked and all of these elements still turned on for visibility I'm gonna make a new layer comp called blue background and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to save this. Now the reason I'm saving it, we place the original file back in InDesign. So it's linking to the original file. So when I save this as this layer comp and I make a save to this Photoshop file, it should update the file back in InDesign. Now, let me switch back to InDesign. I'm not going to have the visibility of these items based upon what I've turned on and turned off here. I'm going to go under Object to Object Layer Options. And notice this at the bottom. Layer Comp. This says the last document state. The last document state I had just before we saved and switched over here was just having the background layer active. That's why we only see the background right now. But notice when I click on the drop down menu here by layer comps, I have access to all my layer comps. Remember the one we made up called minus the airplanes? So it's going to bring back everything and show it to me in this document as soon as it updates of everything that's in that graphic except the airplanes. I still can go up in here in the upper portion and turn on and turn off what I want. 
but I can build those layer comps back in Photoshop to give me some variety and then pick those different layer comps here. So let me show you something here. I'm going to do something kind of challenging here. I'm going to pick complete. And that's going to turn all my layers back on because that's a layer comp I named with everything turned on. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to hide all the layers except background. Okay, just that. And I'm going to click OK. Now hang in there. Whoops, I don't want this effect. The text. Okay. Now here's what I'm going to do. I want to click on here and I want you to see how big the frame is not the contents right here in the middle see how big the frame is it's actually going over the whole page so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say fitting and I'm gonna use the relatively new option I have called content aware fit So what it did, it looked at the entire frame size. And then it said like Photoshop, I'll build content to fill the areas of the frame that aren't being filled currently. And look at that. It's magnificent. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do next. I would like to show the graphics but I have the layer options on, so only the background's on. I'm going to take this layer that has this object, and I'm going to drag it down over the new layer icon in InDesign. It's going to make a duplicate. I'm going to lock the original that has my background blues and clouds. I'm going to double click on this again because I need to rename this. And let's say I want to bring back um, elements. And let's say elements one. Now here's the cool thing. I'm going to click on this layer. I'm going to click on this little square. I'm going to go back to object, layer options. And I'm going to turn off the background because that was a duplicate of the other one. And I want element two brought back. And you see how big it is because it's remembering the size it was before. And I've got effect, your text here. So I'm going to bring back everything except the clouds. Now hang in there. In fact, I don't want the text. Okay, so on this one, I only want these layer groups showing. Click OK. Now hang in here. Here comes the fun part. With this selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say fitting and I'm going to say fit content proportionally. And what it does, it takes those elements I've told that can be visible and fits them to the width of this comp. Now I still can make this bigger. So I'm going to click here now let's go over here and go shift option press wait one second and start to drag and I'll bring this up to about this size beautiful so what I'm doing is I'm using the layered Photoshop file and I'm placing that. 
Then I'm going back into the object to layer options once it's selected and I'm picking and choosing what parts I want to use. Then I duplicated that layer with that graphic and I decided to turn off the background but bring back this 3D text and this billboard look and all this and that's a separate element. I'm using the same graphic but the cool thing is I can pick and choose which layers of that same graphic I'm going to use. Yep. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on this back to school graphic and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say let's edit with Photoshop and I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to turn on the layers so I can see them here in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over here to where it says your text here and I'm going to double click on this smart object icon. And let's say I come in here with the type tool and I come over here and I click by the L and I move the cursor to the right a little bit and I go question mark. Because we're all wondering how school is going to be handled during this COVID crisis. I'm going to close this smart object and I'm going to save changes. And what I'm going to do after I've saved it up here, it's almost done. It's actually updating all the graphics back on the original but I'm changing this one smart object and so it updates back to here. Okay, we've added our question mark here after school. So what I'm gonna do before I save this and go back to InDesign, I'm gonna turn off all the things I don't need like background and element two. Whoop, I need element two. Uh, let's see here. I think that's the only thing I need to turn off because that's what I didn't have on before. So let's go ahead and save and let's go back to InDesign. Okay, so now we're back in InDesign here and it's going to update it and so now it brought in that question mark. So I can go ahead and I can work with these layers that I build in Photoshop and I can control which ones are being used back in InDesign. I also can go back to my like my original document and make changes and have it edit and update here also. I just want you to know about using layered Photoshop files and working with layer comps when you have a design that has Photoshop and it's got lots of layers and you can't decide which ones you want to use, you can use this option. I hope you had a good time on this and we'll talk to you later.